Good afternoon, um, everybody. First and very obviously, I'm highly honoured to receive the Carnegie Medal for Philanthropy, but I do share it with a large number of other people, uh, which are the A Plus Wood Foundation team, which have done really all the work. Um, I do feel particularly proud representing, proud representing Scotland on this 100th uh, anniversary time of the passing of what is clearly a legendary Scot. Um, it's already been alluded to that Andrew Carnegie's philanthropy began at home in Scotland, and he was keen to encourage others to give. And the, the um, program that was featured there, the Youth and Philanthropy Initiative, um, very much introduces young people to philanthropy. And it is something like 35,000 youngsters each year um, go through a, a, a process, learning process in school with um, significant amounts of money then made available to the charities that they, uh, that they um, choose um, and which are chosen as the uh, winners. And the key thing there is we are actually seeing young people beginning to think about philanthropy and become quite active. Other activities in Scotland, um, we have established a significant local economic development company for our region. Um, my wife's project built a seven-storey visitor's car park for our local hospital and we're involved in child poverty and child education. But charity must not end at home. And this is, if I may, a very serious message. The developing world, which is more than half the world's population, faces a completely different scale of hardship and suffering from the Western world. More than 2.9 million children die every year, 2.9 million from malnutrition. Pneumonia and diarrhoea are the deadliest illnesses, accounting for about a quarter of the deaths. And there are 202 million children under five, clearly undernourished and underweight. Globally, 340 million children have no education, and I mean no education. And, grant, and across the world, 800 million people live in extreme poverty, and that's two and a half times the population of the United States. In choosing our significant international project, the Wood Foundation were very aware that the Sub-Saharan Africa, more than 217 million people are, are undernourished, yet half of the world's uncultivated agriculture lay in that continent. So that had to be an opportunity, and we, we began there. After some market research, we chose the tea industry in Rwanda and Tanzania because we'd found that tens of thousands of the smallholder farmers were being exploited by the big tea estates, with the farmers lucky to be earning $1.50 a day farming tea on a hectare of land. So a hectare of land, two and a half acres of land, was their land. They did the work on the land, and the best they could do is get $1.50 a day. Their sole ambition was to try and get enough money to feed their families, with education for these children being a bonus if they could afford it. By applying business principles, employing some of the best people in the tea industry and working within the local cultures, our team in Africa is having a major sustainable impact on 100,000 farmers and support staff. Incomes have quadrupled for the farmers and doubled for the support labour working in the field. And we're now planting about 15,000 hectares of new tea land for the farmers. So we are helping people to help themselves. And I guess that's the underlying principle we're working to do things to help people help themselves in a long-term, sustainable way, and it is working. Recently, we, we jointly hosted with the farmer leaders two local celebrations, they're called Baratsas, um, which is way, their way of saying thank you. Over two events, more than 10,000 farmers turned up. Um, in both occasions, spending about four hours singing and dancing, and sharing their enhanced well-being stories and saying thank you. Many had walked overnight to be there, and certainly it gave the foundation of my colleagues some really proud memories. Now, I know from a membership of the Giving Pledge that Americans are the most generous philanthropists in the world, but, and it's a very big but, only about 5% of your philanthropy goes outside the US. So 95% is focused internally. My question, why such a small proportion to your much less fortunate fellow human, humanity in developing countries? I know there's the challenge of 
working in different countries and cultures. But it's possible, and there's a big plus here, to have a transformational impact on communities, regions, and countries. You're all here generally philanthropists, but successful business people. And frankly, you apply the same business principles. Market research to identify the opportunities um, that fit your giving profile, find a good local partner, and find some good local management. And there are some really good local management um, in, uh, in Africa with a lot of potential. Um, and you then have the opportunity to have a huge impact and transform many thousands of lives. Frankly, the, the older generation across the world have not been good at accepting the concept of global responsibility. We are not doing a great job in enhancing the harmony, prosperity, and well-being of mankind. Somehow, the overseas and global problems are somebody else's to solve. Bill Gates says it very well. We should all judge ourselves, not just on how best we're looking after our planet, and its ecosystems, but in how well we're helping look after the impoverished, sick, and downtrodden people who are a world away from us, who have nothing in common with us except their fellow human beings. My warm congratulations to all my fellow medal recipients. Clearly, there have been some fantastic stories and great stories. But I would urge you, please, I would urge you please just at least give some consideration to the proportion of your giving, your very generous giving, that might uh, be, when I say better applied, the dollar in the, in the very poor areas would have a, a much greater obvious impact in terms of any measure um, as opposed to what happens at home. And there are so many needy communities. My congratulations also to the Carnegie family of institutions for keeping alive the incredible work, enterprise, and generosity of a very great Scotsman. Thank you very much.